Okay, so today we are reviewing Ethics for Behavior Analysts by John Bailey and Mary Birch, the fourth edition. And we will review a few cases, starting with case 107, Do No Harm. Okay, so 107 says that behavior and its cultural responsiveness and diversity. Behavior analysts actively engage in professional and development, development activities to acquire knowledge and skills related to cultural responsiveness and diversity. They evaluate their own biases and ability to address the needs of individuals with diverse needs slash backgrounds. For example, age, disability, ethnicity, gender expression, identity, immigration status, marital relation status, national origin, race, religion, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status. Behavior analysts also evaluate biases of their supervisees and trainees, as well as their supervisees, as well as their supervisees and trainees' ability to address the needs of individuals with diverse needs slash backgrounds. Okay. So case 1.07 says, do no harm. I have a question regarding a 10-year-old regarding a 10-year-old client who was born male. Since beginning, since, since beginning services nearly seven years ago, the client has always chosen to be female characters during pretend play, female avatars during online play, and when working on safety skills related to dressing for weather, asked to shop in the girls' section. Mom and dad have been uncomfortable with this in the past, but because it is not related to his diagnosis, we have allowed him during ABA treatment time to be whatever character he chooses during games. Recently, mom brought up that he brought up that she would like us to be contingent with him switching to male characters when he plays online games with friends and dad's idea was to remove access to the computer if our client chooses to play as a female avatar. In this situation, because the client is 10 and a minor, we don't want to cause any harm to the client psychologically. What is the best course of action? I have recommended to the family that they have the client speak to a professional who is better equipped to help navigate gender related issues. What is my ethical obligation as his supervisor as far as sub supporting their contingencies if there is potential that it's harmful to him psychologically? I have reached out to others at my organization for help and we all agreed that getting outside input would be helpful. Whew. Okay, so what do we think about case 107, do no harm? Of course, you would have to bring up the subject that no one really has a proper answer for quite yet. However, <clears throat> um, as a behavior analyst, we cannot do any contingencies based on gender. Um, it is very, very clear in um, the Belmont and other studies and other guidelines that um, anything that even resembles any form of conversion therapy, which is what we would be doing, we would be making gender, you know, uh, reinforcement contingent upon gender. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be uh, the, 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 the basis for any, any conversion therapy or conversion treatment. And that has been flatly outlawed. You know, uh, um, it's, it's unethical, it's illegal, it's something that we cannot do in our field whatsoever. So that's the first thing we kind of want to explain to the parent yes. um, that, that first off, like I said, that any, any reinforcement contingent upon gender or gender expression is what would be considered uh, a basis for conversion therapy and anything that resembles or is close to conversion therapy has been proven through research and over time and all of that, that it is uh, detrimental psychologically. 
gender identity, gender expression, all of those things are are uh, are a, a person's inalien inalienable rights. They are allowed to do that. Um, so we can't, like I said, we kids. It's almost like um, making food or sleep, you know, contingent on, on yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah, we we again, we can't we can't do those things either. So. Um, that's the first thing we have to explain to the parent that, you know, we do understand that they are uncomfortable. Um, however, as far as contingency planning, we are not in a position that we can do that. Again, like you say, you already suggested that, yes, first thing, they are referred out to a professional that is better equipped to handle um, gender expression issues, gender identity issues, uh, that sort of thing. Um, we are currently in a place in the field and again that has nothing to do with ABA it's more in the mental health psychological space where um, there is some disagreement with how far gender expression goes um, and so like I say you would have to really deal with a, 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 a professional someone who's very well versed and very competent in those in those areas sure Alrighty, let's move on to case 108. Review 1.08 um, says that behavior analysts do not discriminate against others. They behave toward others in an equitable and inclusive manner, regardless of age, disability, ethnicity, gender, expression slash identity, immigration status, marital relationship status, national origin, race, religion, sexual or orientation, socioeconomic status, or any other basis proscribed by law. So case 1.08 is discrimination at work. A BCBA declined my services on their team as a BCABA because of opposing viewpoints. They didn't specify what exactly those were. My guess is that it was either because I'm in a same sex relationship or maybe that my Facebook profile photo says Black Lives Matter in the tagline. Regardless of the exact reasons behind the refusal of my services, what ethical guidelines are at play and how can my company uphold their values of diversity while also handling this situation ethically. So what do we think about case 1.08, dis discrimination at work? So it's um, first, uh, uh, um, the, the BCABA that's probably being discriminated against in this circumstance mm -hmm. yes. needs to talk to their direct supervising BCBA so that that BCBA can now contact the other BCBA who is rejecting their services and 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 discuss because the first step for any of that is, you know for any kind of ethical issue is is a, a, to a, a attempt an informal resolution directly. Um, be, but because she is a subordinate, she would have to have her, her direct supervisor uh, attempt that resolution with the other BCBA and also kind of point out to the other BCBA that they may be functioning from a bias and not from a, a place of non-discrimination. Um, yeah, differing viewpoints is not a valid reason to not work with someone who is adequately qualified to perform the services. I even work with RBTs and BCABAs that speak different languages from me, because again, they are qualified to perform the services. So now it is, it's really my responsibility to communicate with them effectively if I'm put in a position to be their supervisor. So right. even if I feel like, you know, oh, it's going to be more difficult or, oh, they might not understand as well because this, that, and the third, I can't, that, I can't function from that perspective. Because again, um, that would be discriminatory. Alrighty, beautiful. Um, Although okay. I want to point out, I, I do want to point out, we cannot discriminate 
what our clients can. Okay, so we cannot okay. impose the non-discrimination upon our clients. If our client says, I don't want this RBT because she's in a same-sex relationship, we can't force the family to, to undertake or, or to accept this non-discrimination viewpoint. We can, we can try to express to them that this person is qualified, show them the qualifications, that sort of thing. However, if they are adamant and they say, hey, listen, you know, we're a Christian family and we're not going to have that sort of thing in our house, you will have to find uh, an alt. You will have to uh, reassign right. that RBT. All righty. Okay, let's move on to 1.09. Who is doing the harassing <laughs> now? 1.09 harassment. Behavior analysts do not engage in behavior that is harassing or hostile toward others. Harassment is a form of employment discrimination that violates the Civil Rights Act. So let's see what's going on. 1.09. One of my therapists has been sexually harassed by the client's father. We removed the therapist from the case immediately and set expectations for staying at the client's house to provide therapy. Now, all the therapists are reporting that they have been verbally harassed by the dad on a daily basis and all have requested to be removed from, the, from this case. Am I able to terminate services immediately for the hostile work environment he has created? Do I need to give the family an additional warning and behavior improvement plan for the father? This is interesting. Okay, so. What do we think about case 1.09, who is doing the harassing now, where there is a father in the home harassed, sexually harassing the therapist, and it's like he's harassing every other therapist that entered the home after that, that therapist. Okay, so if if this is occurring on gender lines and you've already talked to the father and you've assigned additional females to the home. I think the next step before, you know, termination of the case would be assign a male. If you don't have a male on staff, then I would say, yeah, you want to, but you want to provide a referral. You can't just terminate services with the client or the family, but you, you would have to say, you know, we are unable to accommodate your needs because you know your needs would probably be a male therapist and uh, we're unable to accommodate your needs and so we have found three or four uh, local agencies that are able to take on your case and we, we will be you know providing you with a referral to to transfer your your case to one of these more suitable so agents. what so then what happens if he sexually harasses the male therapist well then yeah like i say um that point then we would have to we would have to terminate services like i said before because again we're not sure if it's just the females at this point because what they're saying is that they they assigned a female she was sexually harassed they continue to assign females but, you know, I mean, it is a, a relatively female dominated field, especially at the RBT level. So, again, it, like that's why I said, again, if it is happening on gender lines, then I would first want to, you know, I, 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 because, again, one of the, the seven domains of ABA is, is um, you know, experimental. So we got to we got to see first, you know, try try something else, you know, like see. Yes. And then, and then if that something else isn't working, we provided a warning, we've tried, you know, changing the, the, the therapist's gender or size or whatever it is. And then, yeah, then, then, yeah, we provide referrals out. Okay. And, and again, if it's happening continually, then we, we would probably terminate and let them know that the, these are the reasons why we're terminating. We have to. Yeah. Um, let's move on. Beautiful. Let's move on to case 2.09. 